probably spending way too much time working on your software engineering resume, and here's why. Hi, my name is Matt, and collectively, I've spent hundreds of hours reviewing software engineering resumes, both personally and for other people. I've helped people get interviews at Intel, Uber, and TikTok with the ways that I've helped them fix their resumes. Throughout my experience and time looking at people's resumes, I found that there's two groups of people, over warriors versus people who have no context. I want to address both of the concerns of these groups of people in this video today, because if you don't know what a good resume should look like, then I'm gonna show you one that helps somebody get into Google today. And then if you are somebody who really feels like their resume isn't perfect and they've already spent so much time looking at it, I wanna show you how you can spend less time on your resume so long as it hits certain marks. So today, I'm gonna break down a good resume and then I'm gonna show you a little bit more about what I think on how you can fix yours. Let's just get into it. A resume is essentially how you get your foot in the door with most places of work. Your resume has to showcase your experience, your school, your personality, and your achievements. But what it really is, is just a competency test. It's, hey, can this person not mix up their E's and their I's when they're recording a video? And can this person actually do what we're hiring for? Does this person have the keywords on the resume that we're looking for? Can this person, is this person competent essentially? And by getting your foot in the door, that sets you up for the next step of the process, which is to actually do the interview. And the interview is a whole nother set of skills. This is essentially the first part of it where look at it and say, okay, yeah, we'll give this person a shot. And I'm not gonna talk about this part today. I just wanna talk about getting your foot in the door and why a resume is so important and what you have to do about your resume. I would just first worry about, are you presenting yourself in a way that you would hire yourself? And by that, I mean that, are you impressive? And for me, I believe that most people are actually way more impressive than they give off. And they just really undersell their abilities because they're afraid of, oh, am I lying when I say this? Oh, I didn't have the correct metric when I'm doing this. Am I overselling myself? Am I not gonna be, be able to meet the expectations that I'm putting in my resume? And what I have to say to this is that you shouldn't lie on your resume, but you should sell yourself as best as possible. And what do I mean by this? Let's look at these two sentences. I helped him and I fixed the problem he was having. These technically mean the same exact thing, but I feel like, and this is just like the way that I look at it, when you say that you fix something, it's a lot different than the way that you say, that you feel when you say, I help something. But I believe that when you have this sort of verbiage, like weak verbs, like helping and assisted and aided, it doesn't really sell yourself that well. Because are you impressive? or are the people you helped impressive? Obviously, if you're helping deploy some sort of crazy startup app or something like that, that's pretty impressive. But I personally believe that you need to sell yourself and take accountability for the things you actually did and you actually accomplished in your achievements in the past. And not enough people do that because people undersell their abilities. And obviously this is for more of the people who haven't written a resume that they feel confident in before, but I just wanna say, with my mentality, when I'm writing a resume, I want people to know exactly what I did, how I feel strongly about the results that I got, I'm happy with my metrics, and I recorded them. And that's the most important piece. Language is a very useful tool. Use it to the max. Do whatever you can to sell yourself because everybody else is and everybody else is putting themselves in the best light possible. You should be setting yourself in the best light possible as well. Now, if you wanna get your resume personally reviewed by me, check the link down below where we can set up a time to look at your resume so I can help you get the FANG level role that you want. It's not that hard to actually get into the OA phase of most top level tech companies. The hard part is actually passing most of the OAs. So I am certain that I can get you to that level. The rest is gonna be a whole different story and there's more videos to come on that. And so now I'm here at the resume that helps somebody get into Google. This resume was sourced from another content creator that I know, and I just wanna break down a couple of things on his resume. Firstly, I want to say that look at this formatting. I want you to just take a look at this piece of paper and say to yourself, does it feel balanced? To me, yes. Every single line here is three, two spaces, 
four bullets, it feels filled out. There's not a lot of sentences that end with just one word, like features over here or something like that. A lot of the words here are just starting out, you know, with good action verbs, defined, coded. I feel like this resume just is filled. It's, it's not something where it's like, utilize Postgres SQL to store song names, or like, you know, it's not short. And so because of that, just automatically looking at it, I already feel confident that this person probably has a great resume. And you can say, hey, that's just all in your head. That's something that's, you know, stupid or whatever. Why are you even thinking that? But the only thing I have to say to that is, well, then why did this person get into Google? Maybe it was just luck. Maybe all resumes are just luck. But I personally believe that having a balanced just appearance helps a ton with you, way the way you present yourself on a resume. I mean, I, there's nothing more else I can say with that. Look, everything is clean here. He's got a list of four, five uh, languages and frameworks that he's used. It's not a list of random tools. These are commonly used JavaScript, Java, HTML, CSS. Everybody knows what those are. You know, he has a, a list of the stack tech stack that he used for each role and all the projects that he even pulls out. You can even go to right here as well. It's actually deployed. So that's awesome, right? I, I want to talk about this specific bullet over here too. And I want to talk about this thing called the halo effect. The halo effect essentially states that your perception of somebody will just be completely changed based on the first thing that they present to you. If you present to somebody that you went to Harvard, they automatically assume that you're smart because they have some preconceived notion that people who go to Harvard are smart. And I think that's honestly a very fair thing because guess what? Humans are lazy. Most people guess with intuition. They feel the way that things are going to work out. Like you can, you can say to somebody like, oh yeah, don't go into the dark at night alone into the middle of the woods. And they say, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Like, why would I do that? It's the same exact thing with the halo effect. It's like you are intrinsically born, have something in your mind when something makes sense or looks put together, or somebody says that they've done something that you know is hard, you're automatically going to trust them more. You automatically are going to give them a higher chance to succeed or a better opportunity. You can't sell yourself short here. Every single line, every single thing matters. So spearheaded the sh spearheaded shop smalls flagship site rewrite flagship site from Angular 10 to Angular JS by integrating Angular 10 with this existing backend, resulting in a 50% reduction in bundle size and a significant increase in render speed. Great, 50% reduction in bundle size. As a recruiter, let's say that I was a recruiter, somebody who didn't really understand software at all, I can say to myself, hey, 50% reduction, that's pretty good. I already know this person at least recorded what they did, what they accomplished, and they are moving forward with actually having some sort of impact on the project. And this is, of course, a software engineering role of somebody working at a bank. So that means that like the work they're doing isn't just them like grabbing coffees or doing something. It's they actually recorded the metric of what they were able to accomplish. And they put that down as their first bullet, a 50% reduction. And that being like your greatest achievement is pretty great. If you can already tell somebody is doing great work by like doing this sort of effort, by putting in this sort of effort to lead to a 50% reduction in increase and increasing in render speed, you already know that they're going to be pretty successful in other roles. Like, hey, could this person be a good fit for another role in which it needs to something needs to be optimized, right? And so I want to just like go to the next one, develop numerous React components and user friendly UIs in a greenfield web application where which enable end users to efficiently create and edit highly customizable and reasonable web components for marketing. Amex sponsored digital events. So he put React, the thing that he used in one of his, like the one of the frameworks he used in one of the bullets he used over here. And I'm guessing most big tech companies, most big tech companies do use React as one of their frameworks. So having React being referenced back and forth here shows that, hey, he used React. This is great. It's something that's a tool that people know, and it, sh it signals to the recruiter, it signals to the ATS that this person is probably qualified for the role. I want to highlight this thing too. If you don't know what the ATS is, it's the applicant tracker system. 
What the ATS essentially does is it looks through your resume. It says, hey, this person has this many keywords that match to our job listing. They're probably going to be a good fit. They went to this school. They did this. They did that. And the recruiter pushes that onto the hiring manager. And the hiring manager picks from those that list of people to see, oh, this person would be a good fit. I'm going to interview this person. And then the, the interviewing proceeds with that. But I'm, we're not getting into that today. The ATS is something that you have to appease. And this is kind of what I want to go back to. The ATS, I personally believe, once you get it, your resume to a certain point, should not be something that's stopping you from getting a role. If you are constantly getting rejected and you have been getting rejected for the past 300, 400 applications, there's definitely a problem and you're definitely not breaking the ATS system. That's the first step. I believe the best way to beat the ATS system or to get past it is pretty much following the exact framework that is listed in this resume here. Use really strong verbiage for the first word. Talk about what you did, the impact that you have, and what the impact was on the actual like team, what your contributions were. So marketing for Amex sponsored digital events. That means that he's working with another customer. Enhance the scalability of ShopSmall's web application by autonomizing a workflow for new users to create and campaign, customize their first campaign. Saving hundreds of hours of manual configuration time and eliminating turnaround time for new users. So delivering products for not only the enterprise, but for customers as well. Again, this is a resume that shows and signals that this person has experience working with software that customers use and that the enterprises use. And I believe that just having this sort of breakdown where you're explaining very, what you did very clearly with the metric attached to it is exactly what the resume and the ATS system wants and needs. And I also really like how there's a stack bullet over here that has all of the tools used within the role as well. I think that can also help with making the ATS happy too. Let's say that, you know, there's not enough space up here for you to have like express.js mongodb and all this stuff within each of like this list over here because like the line would be you know four lines long or whatever uh so having this as a separate line right here is actually pretty smart and okay i've been glazing this resume for a long time and i feel like uh maybe you know you're, you're gonna say oh this education is probably like harvard or something crazy and that's why they got into google but no it's not the case this person went to a state college nothing that impressive or crazy nothing like the top one percent of schools and guess what i i personally believe that just believing in yourself and putting yourself out there is the only way that you're going to get results and see whether or not your resume is good enough and you shouldn't let your education stop you and there's no way for me to explain to you the confidence that you need to like put your resume out there but it's not nothing like you're not going to get hurt if you do it the worst thing that could happen is that you get a no and maybe you spend some time applying. But I personally believe that if you get your resume to a state where it's updated and it looks this nice and it has all of these, you know, really great metrics here, you're showing all the tools that you use. It has highlights like all the specific, um, you know, action verbs, everything that you did, you are automatically setting yourself apart and you should put your resume out as much as you possibly can. And there's obviously maybe a better way to get referrals and talk to you know people who work at the company, but that's not what I'm talking about today. We're just talking about resumes. I think that just getting your resume to a point where you can confidently say, hey, everything in here looks balanced. Everything in here has some sort of action verb attached with a metric and it looks complete, then you should be fine. You shouldn't be spending hundreds of hours looking at your resume, trying to get it clean, trying to make it to like the very tippity top perfect percentage, because as soon as it's in this state, you should just be hitting apply to every single place that you can that fits the job description. Obviously, you don't want to be applying for like level five roles with a resume with one or two internship experiences or something like that. You should be looking at the roles that you personally can fit into and just pressing apply because that's how you get signal on whether or not your resume is working, whether or not your resume is beating the applicant tracking system. Okay, now I gave you all of those pieces and parts. I want to now talk about how you can actually go out, write your own resume, what resources you, be, you should be using and how to use AI effectively when you are writing your resume. Because 
Well, AI slop resumes exist as well. Please do not put your entire resume into an AI chatbot, whatever, and say, rewrite this for me, making it sound as professional as possible. That's just not the way it works because everybody knows AI likes to be ver verbose. AI likes to have these M dashes everywhere. AI likes to have lists. It's just kind of gross the way that it outputs this information. And you shouldn't have your personal brand be ChatGPT's brand, right? Like, the way that you write is very important and the way that you express yourself should be in your own way. You can use ChatGPT for helping you out with grammar, but I really don't recommend that you rewrite your entire resume using AI. What I do recommend is that you use these keywords when you are looking for advice on verbs to help with your resume. So action verbs for sure. I want you to say, can you make this bullet in YC tone? YC is Y Combinator. If you didn't know, it's a startup accelerator where people go and they apply and then they get invested in money and they can build their million dollar tech companies. Just like you have to like think a little bit smarter with the way that you apply your questions to the AI because a general specific resume advice, it, it doesn't really work out for most resumes. You have to be very specific with what you did, the way that you want it, and you have to feel what is the correct bullet. And again, after a certain point, you have to just be okay with where it's at because you need to spend more time applying, not spend more time looking at and revising your resume. 20% of the effort leads to 80% of the results. That means that you really just have to make sure your resume captures everything that you did with the proper metrics, with the proper verbs, and with the proper formatting so that everything looks clean and that you can present yourself properly. Spend some time looking at your resume, spend some time making sure that everything looks proper. And you may say, what does you mean by everything looking proper? What I mean by looking proper is like, let's pretend this is the eye of a reviewer or somebody who's like reviewing your resume. Most people, when they look at resumes, follow an F pattern when they actually look at the content on your resume. And that's why this resume is perfectly formatted for that F pattern. Look, look, watch your eye as you go down you see you look only to the left over here and then you come right back up and you read the first maybe two bullets or the first like two lines over here. Most people don't actually even spend enough time looking at and reading every single part of your resume. They'll just read these first couple of lines and say, okay, this guy sounds like a good enough person to give a chance on and then they'll move forward with that. Again, Resumes and job applications are kind of a numbers game. When it comes to anything involving how you can like succeed in life, you have to think about it less of a this is the this is the game where you have to just study and grind and and work super hard and your your efforts will be reviewed and seen. It's like no, not really. You have to think about it in a psychological manner. How can I poise myself to look as best as possible with the least amount of effort on my part as possible so I can succeed and have the least amount of gray hairs as possible. Because I promise you, there are a ton of people with the same dream as you who don't know this information. And they think, oh, if I just make my resume this much better, if I, you know, maybe just meet the right person or I like, I apply to the right job at the right time and I'll, and uh, I'll, then I'll, then I'll get my chance. I don't get my shot, but no, you need to constantly be learning. You need to constantly be trying. You need to constantly be thinking about how another person would perceive you because again, that's what a resume is. You're trying to sell yourself. Are you impressive? Are you somebody that is worth hiring? If so, yes, pass the person along, give them the OA. If not, I'm sorry you get your you get your rejection email. At the end of the day, your resume is the best way to sell yourself. It records everything that you've done, everything that you think is worth sharing to a employer. Without it, you wouldn't really be anywhere at all. So take the time, spend maybe a few hours, not hundreds of hours, getting your resume to a point where it's good enough. Don't go crazy. Make sure you hit those metrics, make sure you record exactly what you did, talk about technology, and you should be fine. Use your intuition, and if you need more help, you can always contact me. My name is Matt Thing Live Company. I hope you guys learned something, and thank you for watching. Peace.